Face to Face with Chris Fisher. Welcome to the Mergerless. My guest today is a very good friend and one of the founding team members of Merge 104.8, Ramaitha Albasaidi. Welcome to Mergerless. Thank you. I actually like this Mergerless feel. It's uh, cool, isn't it? Feel. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty cozy. It's our little, our little home away from the studio. I know. Now, I love it. Ramaitha, I've known you for almost eight years since we launched Merge 104.8. I know a lot about you, but there's many things that people who are watching and listening now who don't know. Who is Ramaitha Albasaidi? Oh, I think I could define that in three words. Jane of all trades. Oh, four. Four words. Hmm. Yeah, that's four yeah. words, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, define that a little bit more. Okay. Instead of Jane of all trades, like, tell me, So I know you like radio, I know mm -hmm. you study here, you've been on many expeditions. So, I would say that I'm a, I used to be a radio personality. Um, I am an adventurer and an aquaculturist by profession. Wow, okay. Yeah. That sounds painful. No, it's not painful. <laughs> it's all about fish. It's all That's nice. That's me, it's a mac. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All about, well, everything's all about fish. When it comes to me, everything is all about fish. fish. About fish. Cool as the fish in the pool, as they say. Now, I see a lot of motivational speaking that you do and also a lot of conferences that you attend. Mm -hmm. Are they invited conferences? Mostly, yes. I get invited to speak. So um, I think a lot of people uh, kind of resonate with the fact that being a hijabi, Omani woman, how did you kind of reach to where you are right now? And it's quite amazing. My favorite ones are actually going to schools and doing these talks because you actually see so many of the young generation mini being yous. so yeah mini me's yeah, yeah so many of them my minions i would say minions. that actually come in and are so inspired and just want to follow my footsteps and that's just amazing it's fascinating it is good when you see people like that i mean because i guess when you were at school when you were studying and at university and people similar to yourself used to come in to do these talks you were kind of gripped yeah and they motivated you exactly so i mean what type of things what type of questions do you get asked at some of these conferences and some of the schools? So the most number one question that I get asked is how um, can I travel alone? Like a lot of people are not really comfortable with the whole solo travel thing. And yeah. I've traveled to 64 countries alone. 64? Yeah. That is fascinating. I know, right? That is so cool. I mean, I had an objective. Well, not an objective. I had a goal to get to 50 countries before I turn 50. Oh, you can do that, definitely. I know I, well, I know I can. It's going to be a lot of countries because I've got like <laughs> five years to do about 26 countries, which is doable. You think doable, if you go to yeah. like South America, you could do about three or four countries in the space of about 10 days. Agreed. Th yeah. Various parts of Europe yeah. and, and so on. So, yeah, but 64 countries. Yeah. That is brilliant. When do you think you'll get to 100 countries? Hopefully before I turn 40. That's the plan. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to ask you what your age is. It's very I'm okay disrespectful with sharing. to ask it's ladies. It's not. It's not. I, I, think I don't is. know. I, I'm an old school guy. Okay. All right. So if you... I'm not going to ask you your age because uh, I think it's, uh, it's a private thing, especially when it comes to ladies. Okay, so I know you as Ramatha the traveler, Ramatha the inspirational speaker, Ramatha who was a radio presenter with myself. What is next for Ramatha? So I'm actually uh, leaving Oman to... <laughs> but it could be temporarily. Um, actually Let's leaving. hope it's temporary. <laughs> we need you here. So I'm leaving to do my third master's in public administration. Third master's? Yes. Wow, I didn't even yeah. know you'd done two master's. I did two while I was radio presenting with you, if you I remember. I thought your first master's. I know. <laughs> that was your second master's. Oh, my word. So are you going to try and get into the Guinness Book of Records for the most... The Imani with the most masters? I don't think that's possible. So apparently, according to the Guinness World Book of Records, there's someone who has done 25 degrees in the span of his life. Oh my word, that's and a that lot of spans bachelor's, master's, and PhD degrees. I don't think I'll reach wow. that. Wow, no. that's, that's like <laughs> a scientist completely. That's like a major scientist. Like That's a major geek, but that's quite impressive. Yeah. Right, I've got a couple of questions for you relating to Ramadan. I fasted last year. I enjoyed it. I did every day. I, did, I didn't just give up the food, I did the water and everything, and just the whole mind thing. Mm -hmm. What tips, if this was my first year of fasting, what tips would you give me, or anybody else who's thinking about fasting? Right, so 
possibly I could split them into two. Um, so Ramadan in general is not fasting as in physically fasting. You also mentally and spiritually fast. So the first thing, which is the toughest one, is doing the spiritually mental thing before you actually abstain from food. I would say make sure to be a good person and not really uh, say bad words and try your level best to actually be patient because that's really, really a virtue that a lot of us kind of tend to forget and Ramadan yeah. reminds us of. And in regards to the physical thing, I would say start small. I mean, there's this big movement on f intermittent fasting right now. So you could start off with that, like uh, abstain for 16 hours and then kind of eat. I, I don't know how, many, how it works, but probably 12 hours and then so start small and then so kind of go up. build it up build exactly up, especially in the summer months now, yeah long and time yeah and before you start fasting make sure to hydrate before you actually start the fasting okay. and stay indoors because it's so hot you don't want to collapse well so when you finish fasting what is your favorite iftar meal <gasps> dates and leban to be honest really yeah that that's something that i so look forward to every single ramadan wow to kind the of give first you that, breaking fast that big sugar boost, that energy boost straight away. I know, away. and the taste, I mean, it's a combination of sweet and saltiness of the lemon. I mean, it's, I don't know, that combination is just my favorite. Nice. Yeah. And what benefits do you feel by the end of the month of Ramadan, personally, inside? I think mostly it's reminding me that I can be patient. Uh, yeah. Like I said, it's uh, something that's very difficult. I'm a type of person, you know me, that's very direct and straightforward, so. True it's very difficult to actually hold your tongue and just let it slide. So I think it's a good reminder of that. And also physically, I tend to work out a lot in Ramadan. I don't know, maybe it's the un, the energy that you have from yeah. withholding stuff that you need to kind of let go of it. So I think physically as well, it really helps out. That's the element I'm going to be adding in this year, um, trying to add in physical exercise mm. prior to iftar pri no, yeah. pri prior to yeah to breaking my fast that's what i'm gonna add in maybe like 15 minutes of walking before yes. and build that up slowly yeah. as well that's what i'm gonna do and it's also ramadan is a good time to actually connect with friends and family after like iftar so we have the prayers called tarawih prayers yeah. and what we usually do, do as a ritual is actually after the prayers is just walk so the entire family walks and it's nice. a very nice um team building kind so when of i'm seeing thing. groups of of congregated people walking yeah. like, oh, that's one family, that's another yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, that's that mostly cool. that, yeah. I'm going to look out for that. Yeah. Now, Ramey, before I let you go, I've got random questions about a man. Mm -hmm. I want you to pick two here, so, and I'm just going to see how well you know your country. How well I, you know a man? I hope I do know I think a lot. you know very well. I think you're <laughs> going to do quite well. Which, okay. Which one is this? Okay. Oh, which You year? attended this. Oh. 1986. The question is, which year was the Sultan Qaboos University the first university in the country established? 1986 is the correct answer. Okay. Pick, pick me one more. Pick one more. Okay. That one. Okay. Which, what took six years and four months to complete in Oman? So this is definitely a landmark. Yes. Six years. I'm going to give you a clue. I remember, once, it, okay. I remember once we had a conversation in the office here. And you tell me about when you were a child and your mum pointed somewhere <gasps> out to you. The Grand Mosque? Yes. Yes. It was the Grand Mosque. Perfect. Do you remember that conversation? Yes, we I had? do remember and you were that. And you say, mom, your mum said, this is going to be the Sultan's Grand Mosque. And yeah. we were all like laughing. It was like, really? Yeah. This empty space and is not going to be anything. So. Ramath Al Basayadi, friend, former work colleague, thank you for chatting to us here in the merger list today. No, thank you for the invitation. I really enjoyed my term at the, my, ter my time at the merge list. <laughs> I'm glad you did. Bit of a tongue twister, but yes, you, you enjoyed your time. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Thank you. Face to Face with Chris Fisher. Merge 104.8.